Good morning, my name is Nicoletta and I'm Vice President here at Summit Security Services. Today I'll be hosting our monthly segment called InfoGuard Domestic Terror Watch. As mentioned on previous shows, the purpose of this segment is to consolidate terror-related events that occurred over the last month into one forum to present to our viewers. Many of our viewers may have seen some of these stories on their local news, but we hope that by consolidating the information, we can paint a clearer picture of the growing threat of terrorism domestically. In last month's segment, Joe Cannon and I had the opportunity to sit down with Congressman Peter King, the current chairman of the House Homeland Security Committee. If you have not had a chance to check out the video, you can see it on InfoGuard's website or on Summit Security's YouTube page. In the interview, Congressman King shared with us some of his views on domestic terrorism, the death of Osama bin Laden, and his plan for future congressional hearings. It was a great interview, and we thank Congressman King for taking the time to sit down with us. Our first story covers recent intelligence reports about the desire of Osama bin Laden to coordinate an attack on the U.S. on the 10th anniversary of September 11th. This intelligence comes from communications that were seized during the raid that killed Osama bin Laden. It has been well published that both bin Laden and al-Qaeda desired to attack the U.S. on significant dates, which led to an increased security around the 4th of July. With that being the case, I don't believe this intelligence presents anything that our intelligence and defense agencies weren't already preparing for. The intelligence does indicate that bin Laden had been removed from actual operations and was seen as more of a spiritual figurehead by senior al-Qaeda terrorists, something that we have heard for several years prior to bin Laden's death. The communications were mostly, mostly with al-Qaeda's operations chief, Atiya Abd al-Rahman, who has risen in stature in the terrorist organization because of the death of many of the organization's other top leaders through our country's operations. Al-Rahman has long been on top of our country's most wanted terrorist list. Most of the ideas passed between the two terrorists, such as an idea to kill President Obama or General Petraeus, were notional and had little operational substance. What I find troubling in this report is its potential to incite lone wolf terrorists to attack our nation on an emotionally significant day. I firmly believe there is more of a danger from radicalized domestic terrorists than from an organized terrorist attack. As we recently saw in Mumbai, terrorists have become more adept in the use of improvised explosive devices or IEDs made from readily obtainable chemicals and materials. Both the attempted Times Square bombing and the foiled Zazi subway bomb plot involved American citizens who had been radicalized by trips to their home country or through the internet. As we reported in March, this tactic of radicalizing Western citizens to use IEDs is one of our intelligence community's top priorities to counter in the war on terrorism. The Obama administration has taken note of this trend and recently released its first counterterrorism strategy since the death of Osama bin Laden. John Brennan, the Deputy National Security Advisor for Homeland Security and Counterterrorism, recently stated this policy designates the homeland as a primary area of emphasis in the nation's counterterrorism efforts. Brennan went on to say that the strategy will focus on al-Qaeda's ability to inspire people in the United States to attack us from within. Since bin Laden's death, al-Qaeda has increased messages through its websites, videos, and audio tapes, and urged sympathetic Muslims in the U.S. to conduct lone wolf attacks to avenge their leader's death. What I think is most critical to take from this whole piece is how important every citizen's role is within the domestic security piece. Our law enforcement, intelligence, and defense communities are doing an unbelievable job actively protecting our country from attack. However, it has been shown repeatedly that what often leads to the foiling of potentially devastating attacks are tips from average citizens. I believe this goes back to the Department of Homeland Security's message of, if you see something, say something. Our cities and streets become safer when there are more sets of eyes staying aware and reporting suspicious behavior. In related news, the Brookings Institute released a report focused on the possibility of drones being used against the U.S. in a terrorist attack. The Institute stated in the report that it would be possible to build smaller, less expensive, and more versatile drones than those currently employed overseas. As someone who saw the effectiveness of drones firsthand overseas, I know how lethal these machines are. I still believe that a greater threat is from inspired domestic terrorists using cheaply made improvised explosive devices. The executives of some of these companies that make our drones may be in greater danger than themselves. Several reports have detailed terrorist organizations' desire to plot and kill CEOs of drone producing companies, such as Lockheed Martin, in retaliation for our drone attacks overseas. Final report, I wanted to talk about crowdsourcing. 
Crowdsourcing is the technique used by Wikipedia and Netflix to pull information from its internet users to create data entries or even top movie picks. Now Applied Research Associates will launch a crowdsourcing program to help predict and forecast international events. The intent is to see if pulling data from the general public will create a better intelligence picture. Applied Research Associates believes that there are tidbits of information distributed among diverse crowds and that by aggregating these information pieces, a more complete picture can be formed. The plan is to weigh individual predictors over time by the accuracy of their forecasting so that their judgment is weighed more heavily when they are more accurate. Similar programs have been rolled out by the CIA's venture capital arm, InQtel, and by the Defense Department, but in more modest forums. Applied Research Associates is hoping that the program, known as ACES, will be successful enough to be used for national intelligence estimates. The program is in its beta form right now, but users can sign up as of last Friday. It is, is expected to be completed within the next four years. That's all we have for this month's edition of the InfraGuard Domestic Terror Watch. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next month.